Tom Brady is out and Baker Mayfield is in. That has created a doomsday narrative around Chris Godwin's fantasy football outlook. And sure, one is the greatest quarterback to ever walk the earth, and the other has had three teams decide they don't want him in the last 12 months. But the Chris Godwin fear has swung too far. Baker Mayfield actually played well down the stretch with the Rams last year, which gives us a little bit of hope that he can command a quality offense. Now he gets a fresh start with the best wide receiver duo he's ever played with, and an offensive line that is healed after an injury-riddled 2022 campaign. While there is optimism that Mayfield can play well in this environment, he certainly has his limitations to his game that cannot be argued against, like his struggles to consistently push the ball out to the boundaries. Instead, he tends to lean on guys that are operating in between the numbers. That plays right into Chris Godwin's hands as he took 57.5% of the snaps last year from the slot. Back in his Browns days, Baker Mayfield's tendency to pepper slot receivers propelled Jarvis Landry to one of the best seasons of his career. And we know Godwin is a much more dynamic player than Jarvis Landry ever was, especially now that he has a full season under his belt since that torn ACL. Remember, Godwin suffered his knee injury late in the 2021 season. We didn't even think he would be ready to start in 2022. And while he was on the field in week one, it was really clear that the team should not have put him out there and they should have given him more time to recover. But even while missing multiple games and not looking like himself until at least mid-season, Chris Godwin managed to set career highs in targets with 142 and receptions with 104. He was difficult to defend with a top 20 route win rate and a 14th ranked 55.6% contested catch success rate, both of those per playerprofiler.com. Godwin continued to be one of the most dynamic threats after the catch as well, with nearly 500 yards post-reception, which ranks sixth in the NFL. And Godwin will continue to be a target hog in 2023, despite the presence of Mike Evans. We've already touched on Mayfield's struggles to consistently get the ball down the field and outside the numbers, which won't bode well for Mike Evans as his game is focused in those areas. Even if Mayfield suddenly became Jameis Winston as a downfield passer, Evans has shown a steady decline in efficiency over the last few seasons. And without Tom Brady, he might be toast. And then beyond that, there really isn't much of a threat for target competition for Chris Godwin. Another case that these anti-Chris Godwin drafters have made against him is that without Tom Brady, this team is going to be a run-heavy offense. And to that I say, not so fast. The Buccaneers as a team, as an offense, they were average at best last year. So now that they're without Tom Brady, they're probably going to be pretty bad. And what do bad teams typically have to do to try to stay competitive and to rally these comebacks? They pass the ball. It's the Blake Bortles rule. Remember in what, 2016 or something, the team was terrible, but they had to pass the ball in comeback mode in the fourth quarter. And he just racked up tons of yards, tons of touchdowns. Allen Robinson had that big season. It was all because that team was terrible and they were passing the ball at a high rate in comeback mode for the entire second half. Of course, there's no chance they come anywhere close to the more than 750 pass attempts that Tom Brady had last season, but an above-league average pass rate is more likely than not. And if you don't believe me, then take the team's own actions into account. They released Leonard Fournette at the start of free agency, and they did absolutely nothing to replace him. Their only additions at that position were Chase Edmonds, who's a pass-catching running back, and an undrafted Sean Tucker. That leaves Rashad White clearly in the driver's seat. And what is Rashad White best known for? His receiving skills. And you really don't think the Bucs are aware that they had the league's lowest rushing yards per game in 2022 or the lowest rushing EPA per play? They're well aware. And yet they did nothing to try to fix that because they know they're going to have to lean on the passing game again in 2023. The bottom line is Chris Godwin is a great value at his current ADP. Whatever inefficiency he might face with Baker Mayfield, a quarterback, is already baked into the cost and then some. He has very little target competition on an offense poised to pass the ball at a high rate with a quarterback who leans on his slot receivers. On top of that, Chris Godwin has now gone a full season and offseason after that 2021 ACL tear, so we know he will be back to full form for the duration of the 2023 campaign. Now let's not forget, he was wide receiver 7 in fantasy points per game in 2021 before the injury. He was wide receiver 15 in 2020, and in 2019, pre-Tom Brady, he was wide receiver 2. So draft Chris Godwin in the fourth round with confidence and know you just committed 
highway robbery. Hey, if you like that video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment what you want me to talk about next. You can find all my stuff, my rankings, articles, podcasts, more videos like this on yardsperfantasy.com. Just download the Yards Per Fantasy app and we thank you for your support.